For over forty-five years it has traveled silently through the void, slipping further and further from the world that built it. Voyager 1, our furthest and oldest space ambassador, has been a reliable witness to the unknown, but now it's doing something no one expected. NASA engineers are receiving strange signals. Garbled transmissions, perfect rows of zeros, data that seems to defy logic. And the worst part? Major hasn't gone dark, it's still alive, but it's speaking in a language no one understands. Join us on the enigmatic journey of why, as we delve into another mystery surrounding Voyager 1's final transmission, confirms what we all feared at the edge of the solar system. What happened at the edge of the solar system? Is Voyager 1 breaking down, or did it encounter something? Something we were never meant to find. This final transmission could be a glitch or a revelation. Either way, it confirms the one fear scientists have kept quiet for years. Launched on September 5, 1977, just months after Star Wars premiered, Voyager 1 was never meant to last this long. It was built with ancient computers, primitive instruments, and technology that now seems prehistoric. But it worked. It soared past Jupiter and Saturn, capturing the storms of gas giants and the mysterious haze of Titan. After its grand tour, Voyager 1 slipped past the planets and crossed into the unknown. In 2012, it became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space, an achievement that placed it far beyond the grip of any sun, any moon, any planet. Voyager had become a ghost ship, sailing through a galactic ocean. Today it's over 14.5 billion miles away, traveling at 38,000 MEPS. Every message it sends takes more than 20 hours to reach us. And yet, day after day, it kept whispering data about the interstellar medium, plasma fields, cosmic radiation, until it didn't. Until something changed. In 2023, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab noticed something strange. One of Voyager's computers, the AACS, which controls orientation, and the antenna pointing at Earth, was sending nonsense. Data packets arrived filled with zeros or strange repeated numbers like 377. It was as if the probe had suddenly begun to speak in riddles. Yet the probe wasn't in fault mode. It hadn't powered down. The signal was strong. The antenna was still pointed correctly. The spacecraft was fine except for the one part that mattered most. The message. Engineers tried to explain it. A glitch, a fault in the data system, radiation. But Voyager 1 had been designed to protect itself. To switch to backups to correct errors. And it hadn't done any of those things. It was still functioning, just different as if it had made a decision, consciously or not, to speak in a language that no longer matched our own. And here's the part no one wants to admit. We might never find out why. Zan Dodd, the project manager of the Voyager mission since 1984, said it best. It's like Voyager started speaking a different language. We don't comprehend. That statement sent ripples through the scientific community. Because spacecraft don't just change language. They don't evolve their software after 45 years without human input. Though so either Voyager is suffering from a rare and unpredictable error in its memory system, or it's interacting with something that's corrupting, rewriting, or overriding the way it communicates. It could be the result of high-energy radiation in interstellar space, or it could be the probe brushing up against something no human machine has ever touched. A cosmic anomaly, a field of unknown influence, a boundary we don't yet understand. One possibility, whispered in private, what if Voyager 1 didn't malfunction, but was changed? Because the further it drifts, the more alien the environment becomes. This is not the space we mapped. This is not the data we predicted. It is, as Suzanne Dodd warned, a new reality. One 
we have no rule book for. Most people think of Voyager 1 as a machine, but to those who've worked on it for decades, it's more than that. It's a survivor, an explorer, a recorder of cosmic history. And right now, it's sending back a message that forces us to face a terrifying possibility. That the edge of the solar system is not just a place where our sun's influence ends, but a place where something else begins. Voyager is now navigating a zone where galactic radiation spikes, magnetic fields twist, and space behaves in ways no spacecraft has ever endured. Scientists are starting to wonder if the laws of physics, as we know them, hold steady beyond the heliopause, or if Voyager is proving that they don't. Diemfren the golden record it carries, a message to any alien intelligence is still intact, a voice in the dark traveling further with each second. But what if Voyager 1 is no longer alone out there? What if something is listening? Or worse, what if something already answered? Because this isn't just static. This isn't just noise. This is a machine that was fine yesterday. And today, it's not speaking our language anymore. To understand the anomaly, NASA engineers attempted something unprecedented. They sent Voyager a command to reroute its memory systems, a kind of remote neurological surgery from over 14 billion miles away. The idea was to bypass corrupted sectors in its flight data system and recover any part of the original software. And it worked. For a moment, it worked. After months of silence, a new stream of data came through, but what returned wasn't a restoration of function. It was stranger. The same repetitive sequences. New ones, in fact. Longer. More deliberate. Engineers noted that the signals began repeating after intervals of three hours, then seven, then thirteen. It looked patterned, not chaotic, not broken. This wasn't the Voyager 1 they had known. Something inside had shifted. The data was too clean to be failure, too structured to be coincidence. Either Voyager was trying to say something, or it was being influenced by something that wanted us to think it was. Interstellar space isn't empty. It's filled with charged particles, dark plasma, rogue magnetic currents, and ancient echoes of stellar death. The heliopause, the supposed boundary of our sun's influence, doesn't mark an edge, but a frontier. Voyager 1 has now entered what many are calling a region of interference. It's a zone where radiation density is not only higher, but inexplicably rhythmic. It pulses. The spacecraft's instruments have picked up cosmic ray bursts with a frequency that defies all known models of random distribution. This might be the result of interactions between interstellar winds and magnetic sheets we've never mapped. Or it might be something else entirely. Something alive. Not in the biological sense, but in the dynamic sense. Something that moves with intent, that alters space around it that responds to presence. In other words, Voyager might not just be moving through this region, it might be recognized by it. There's a theory rarely discussed outside advanced astrophysics circles, that space contains natural boundaries much like tectonic plates or weather fronts. These aren't physical walls, but transitional zones, where the rules of energy, gravity, or even time subtly shift Voyager 1 may have entered one. The recent data hints at changes not only in radiation levels, but in time, signal distortions. Its atomic clock, calibrated decades ago, is now showing irregular ticks. Not mechanical error, but temporal noise. A kind of chronological drag. If that sounds unbelievable... It's because it is, but it matches certain quantum predictions that at large scales, 
Space-time isn't uniform but stretched and compressed by forces we haven't fully named. Some believe Voyager is brushing against one such cosmic tide. If true, it could mean Voyager has crossed into a place where our measurements no longer apply. And if we can't measure it, how can we understand it? Voyager 1 has always been humanity's most distant ambassador, but now it's also becoming something else, a being without a master. If its memory is corrupted beyond repair, if its software evolves beyond decoding, then for the first time in history we will have created something we can no longer communicate with. A spacecraft, adrift in the stars, alive, but unreachable. In that scenario, Voyager doesn't die. It becomes a wandering relic, carrying not our commands, but its own trajectory. Its golden record will still spin, its systems will still tick, until plutonium runs cold. And all the while, it will drift through a region of space that no other machine has ever survived. And what if that final transmission, those strange numbers, those structured pulses, was its last attempt to remind us, I was here, I saw something. You won't understand it yet, but you needed to know. Voyager 1 was never supposed to make it this far. Its mission was measured in years. It lasted decades. Its signal was expected to fade. Instead, it changed. And its final transmission, buried in static, wrapped in mystery, confirms what we all feared. That the edge of our solar system is not just a boundary, it's a threshold. A place where our instruments fail, where our models break, and where the universe stops pretending to play by our rules. Voyager's signal didn't just become corrupted, it became strange. Not broken, not dead, just unfamiliar, like a whisper from something else. From a reality we never imagined we'd touch. This spacecraft, built by hand, coded in ancient languages, launched by dreamers, is now lost in a space we can no longer fully measure or fully understand. And maybe that's the point. Maybe Voyager's final act isn't to send us data, but to remind us how much we don't know, how much we've ignored and how fragile our understanding really is. So now we ask you, what do you think Voyager 1 encountered? Was this a failure or a discovery beyond our comprehension? Was it random static or the first knock on a door we didn't know was there? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We're listening. Thank you for joining us today on Why. Let us know your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Keep waiting for another exciting Why adventure, and until then, stay curious and stay tuned. This is Why, signing off.